right after graduation, my strongest urge was to continue painting. I kept telling myself, it's not about being a student and then graduating. It's about being a painter and you continue to paint. I wanted to examine how we see, how, how I see things and how that works in a painting. Do we really paint what we see or are there formulas that are abstract that uh, lead us or direct us or teach us to make illusions that are persuasive? So I was examining reality and asking what do we see and not only of things I wanted to paint but generally things around me in the world. I started with still lives and also I had developed an idea that uh, if I'm starting on a path, then it should be a path that continues. I don't think in all history anything uh, that where the artist was studying their inward feelings uh, uh, was of interest to history. Uh, I, I think that's just um, a propaganda. <laughs> To me, as I looked at history and looked at art, I thought that all those people who tell us art and painting is self-expression are just deluding themselves and deluding us. Uh, that every good painter I admired in history was scientific and they weren't painting about themselves, they were painting about the world around them and for the society and with the society and of the society they belong to. And so, yes, I'm very scientific. There were times where I thought, you know, we should be more like mathematicians, and mathematicians are very creative. So I, I developed an idea called, which I called visual conjugation. And I thought, well, you can take a verb and change it from one form to another to another. Uh, and why can't we do that with, with, with ideas about painting? And it's easy to do in visual matter. You can change media, you can change uh, a lot of things. And eventually ideas can also be conjugated. So there are permutations or developments or things that grow. But I had a, a questions about edges too that were very important. How do we see edges? Uh, in reality, the, the light is deflected on the edge of something. Whereas in a painting, you don't see that deflection, you just see the result of it. And what is a point on one boundary, right to the side of one boundary, and a point on the other side of a boundary, in reality, they can be miles apart, but in the painting, they can be adjacent. So these were questions that occurred to me. What I do now is really a, a child of this process of thinking. And I look back at these and, you know, I think there is a certain beauty and charm to shading. And these paintings all possess a graduated color. My relationship to them is that I was young and young people have muscles and old people have wisdom. So I was young and I was willing to put a lot of effort in making one painting. So, and, and now I don't do that. I liberated myself from the uh, careful process of thought and investigation into a more intuitive process, but uh, it still is, is based on the uh, uh, persuasion or perception or knowledge that abstraction is an illusion of reality. I'm still it's still reality, it's still examining reality, and it's still finding ways about how we uh, externalize what we see. And you know, all painting is abstract, including Renaissance painting. It's just what, what ideas we have, what knowledge do we have to use to create art.